everyone, and welcome to a special summer edition of Sports Night along with Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Yund, and we're very excited to have three new head coaches to the Coon Rapids program with us this evening. It's a great way to get to meet the new coaches before the season starts. They can tell us a little bit about themselves and what they bring to the program. It'll be a lot of fun. We will be uh, speaking with the new volleyball and girls soccer coaches, but we're going to start with the new girls swimming and diving coach, Ashley Radis. Ashley, thank you for being with us. Yes, thanks for having me. First, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you came to be at Coon Rapids. Sure. So back in the day, high school, middle school, I joined the swim team. Um, didn't know you could join in seventh grade. A friend of mine invited me, so I enjoyed the or I joined the team late and I loved it. Um, swam all six years, went off to college, got my degree, uh, came back and Doug, the previous head coach, was riding the train downtown and ran into my mom and said, <laughs> hey, do you think Ashley would have any interest in coaching? And I thought, well, sure, you know, I'll come back and try it out. And I just loved coaching. So I've been coaching now for, I think, seven or eight years. And so this will be my first year now as head coach. So as we were talking before, uh, taking over for Doug, you have some big flippers to fill, yeah. obviously. <laughs> and, and so talk about some of the things, you've been in the program for a while, yeah. and talk about some of the things that you, you'll bring that may be a little different to the program that uh, Doug wasn't doing previous. Sure. I mean, I think we always joked that I was the culture coach and Doug was the swimming coach. So I think I really, my passion for coaching comes from, you know, first of all, teamwork, hard work. Um, but also having a lot of fun and just that sense that the kids get that they're a part of something that's bigger than just themselves. So that part, that inspirational part, that's what I love coaching. So that comes easy to me. And so now the logistics, the writing of lineups, the writing of practices, that's going to take a little more work because that's something that Doug was really passionate and really good at. So um, thankfully I have a lot of his leftovers to kind of pull from and keep that going in the program. Um, but yeah, that's something that I think is really going to be a lot of learning for me. When you first started coaching, w were there some things that surprised you that maybe were, were different than what you expected? And what were those things? Yeah, well, when I graduated, we won sections and we won true team that year. Um, so at that point, we were the best swim team that had ever existed for Coon Rapids, um, since the 80s at least. And so coming back and seeing a team, I think we had 19 girls when I started, which was very different from I think the 60 plus that we had on the team that would have been, you know, maybe five years earlier. Um, so I was very surprised to see how much the team had changed. Um, a lot of the traditions, the cheers that we would all do as a team didn't really get passed on. So I kind of took it upon myself to try and reteach and like bring some of that back. Um, and that's kind of been my goal throughout. And I feel like finally in the last couple of years, that's really come back and the girls have really embraced some of those, you know, culture things. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a big change and we're still very small. Um, but I think the culture of the team is, is there. So I'm excited to see how that kind of helps us build in the future. You know, you, you talk about depth obviously is, is important. And what are some of the things that you can do to try and get, uh, get more athletes to come out for the program and, and kind of build up that squad? Yeah, so this summer um, we were at the parade. That's the first time I think we've been at the parade, the 4th of July parade uh, ever maybe. Um, and that was something that the parents, the booster club, uh, they're really passionate about and so that's exciting because as coaches we can only do so much with recruiting We really need the support of the team and the team's families and so right now we have a lot of support a lot of excitement and kind of I think people are fed up with being the small team and so people are really coming out brainstorming Ashley can we do this can we get into the open houses can we have tables um, making stickers for the kids to hand out that say swim and dive, just trying to get our name out there because I think a lot of people don't realize that you can join the team, uh, especially in middle school. And so just getting the word out that, hey, you know, maybe sports aren't your thing or you don't think you're that great, uh, come out for the swim team because we don't have tryouts, everybody gets to compete, and if you don't know how to swim that well, we'll teach you. So, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you a couple of things about swimming and diving. Uh, one, it's really about the only sport that can save your life. Yeah, true. Um, 
but one thing that's always impressed me is that inclusiveness you talk about and you know some kids boys and girls both you know girls in the fall and and boys in the in the winter um, that maybe aren't that real athletic or or anything but they are brought in and and really find a kind of a family yeah um, for that after school and it's it's not so much about you know being the best in the pool but continuing to improve on what you did yesterday Correct. and and that is uh, always been something that's very impressed me quite a bit um, is the inclusiveness that that the program brings and uh, you know it, to, to Howie's point how do you kind of get that out there and get more people to, to give it that first shot because it seems once they give it that first shot they don't leave yeah I mean that seems that seems to be the case um, and I, I really do think it's just a matter of visibility and helping people see that we exist. We're a great team. We have a great culture. I mean, the water is a great equalizer. You don't have gravity working against you. Everybody floats. And so it's just about resistance against the water. Um, if you're diving, you have the diving board that kind of shoots you up. So, um, yeah, we have a lot of kids on the team who, for various reasons, can't play other sports, but they can swim and they can be really successful at swimming. So I think, you know, continuing to just like invite people, get the kids to talk about and be proud that they're on the swim team, you know, sharing what they're doing with the swim team, all things that I think will help us. We're, we're getting, you know, just a couple of days into official practices. Give us your thoughts on what you see so far and what your kind of goals and expectations are for this season. Yeah, so far, I mean, we're small this year, smaller than we were last year, but we were small last year too. Um, we have a lot of new kids on the team. I think about a third of our team has never been with us before. Mm -hmm. um, and so something that I see is the older kids, the kids who have been around, really taking that leadership role, uh, teaching, helping them figure out what it's like to be on the team, what they're supposed to do, demonstrating different drills and things that we're doing. Um, so that's, that's something that makes me really happy to see and, and gives me a lot of hope for our future because it really is the older kids on the team that kind of set the standard for what it means to be on the team. I mean, I'm a coach, but at some level I only have so much control. And so seeing these kids who are excited to be on the team, they're proud to be on the swim team even though they're small, um, that, that really gives me a lot of hope and excitement for this season. Well, we're very happy to, that you were able to come in and join us. Very excited to work with you moving through the season. Wish you the best of luck. We are going to take a short break. Much more to come. We've got, again, uh, Ben Benson, the girls soccer coach, coming in next. And then we're also going to speak with uh, the new volleyball coach before this show is over. Stick around. Welcome back to this special summer sports night along with Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young, and we're happy to have new girls soccer head coach Ben Benson with us. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be the head coach. Yeah, I uh, recently moved up here from North Carolina, uh, coached down there for a bunch of years, um, and uh, yeah, found Coon Rapids. Uh, Fell in love with the people, the the community, and the, the school, and uh, yeah, wanted to help turn this program uh, back to its winning days. Uh, you touch on that, so you, you talk about turning the program. What are some of your thoughts on how you can get this program to the next level? Yeah, I mean, I think John did a great job of you know putting the building blocks down for me, and I want to carry on his tradition and uh, kind of do it in in my my way a little bit. Uh, we've got a good group of girls, and I think uh, think we can do it pretty quickly. So how, how familiar are you with the history of the program, the history of the conference, the kind of competition that you'll be facing? Yeah, not, not super familiar with it. Um, learning every day, uh, learning a lot about 
the individual schools around here, watch some footage from last year. Uh, so I got to know some of the teams that way. Um, but I know that Coon Rapids has a rich tradition in soccer, especially the girls program. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's about time that we kind of get back on track and, and get back to the, those winning ways and, and bring pride to the community and the school. Um, granted, it's just been a short time. Practice just started. So, so what are some of the things you're learning about the girls and, and what are they learning about you early here early on? Uh, we, we got a bunch of characters on the team. Uh, a great, great bunch of girls, uh, hard workers, uh, bring a lot to the table. And I think, uh, I think it's time to kind of build, build them up and, and realize that they can do a lot more and they're capable of uh, than we have in the past. One thing that I found very interesting about both boys and girls soccer locally is you have the high school team and then in the summer and off season they kind of split up and go to all their different clubs mm -hmm. how hard is it to try and get them back into a cohesive unit to play as a team that's a good question uh, i think a lot of these girls are really close and i think that that kind of shows no matter where they play um, but that's one thing that i'm trying to do uh, been in contact with uh, North United and, and trying to reach out to some of the clubs around here to kind of build build a cohesive you know a unit and kind of build through the youth programs too you know just kind of prepare the girls introduce them to the to the high school level and, and try to make it more of a community based thing. How's the turnout been for you in terms of uh, girls coming out for the for the sport? Yeah, we had about. 35 uh, for tryouts. Um, I think there's still a couple girls that uh, that for you know certain reasons can't be there. Um, so I'd imagine we'll be somewhere close to 35, 40 range. If you were to characterize how you want your team to play, what would that be? We're going to work hard. <laughs> when when teams see us on the schedule, they're not going to look forward to playing us. They, they're going to know that they're in for. For a dog fight that it, it's going to be a long long haul um but we're going to be fun to watch we're, we're going to push push the envelope and we're gonna we're going to create more chances and uh hopefully put up more goals on the on the score sheet you know what, what are your thoughts in terms of conditioning so so obviously conditioning is really important what do you what do you talk to the girls about how they you want them conditioned so as as the season goes on they're going to be in top form all the way through yeah we condition a lot and we condition more through like small sided games and uh, we we work hard for short short spurts and kind of build that way. Um, not a traditional just run them until they can't run kind of person. Uh, I, I think there's other ways to kind of do that. Um, yeah, that's kind of how we've approached it so far. Obviously team chemistry is a huge part of, of soccer. Um, I was watching some of the, the World Cup uh, over the summer Watching the way those those top level teams move as a unit is obviously Im impressive. They're elite. They're the best in the world. How um, how do you kind of show your girls what it looks like to play as a unit and get them to emulate that on the field? Yeah, I think I think they do that on their own uh, without even realizing it. And, but it's in short spurts, right? So it's it's stopping practice for a second to have them realize what they just did. Um, but I think, like you said, you can utilize especially big events like the World Cup for them to kind of sit down and realize that. And we'll go through game film and stuff like that um, once the season kind of starts rolling a little bit. Um. I lost my train of thought. So, so let, let's talk about the conference itself. Have you have you been had an opportunity to look into the conference and see what the competition is going to bring in, and your thoughts going through for that? Yeah, I know we have some uh, some pretty stiff competition in the in the conference um, state caliber teams. Um, and I'm looking forward to that challenge, you know, I, and I I believe the girls are too. Um, uh, we have a scrimmage coming up at Andover on on Tuesday and. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that'll be a good test for us to kind of see where we're at and see what we need to work on. Yeah, you mentioned, and you mentioned putting up more goals. Uh, that, that has been the struggle over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, they're not getting blown out very often, uh, but a lot of 2 nothing, one nothing, 3-1 games. What can you do to try and produce more at the offensive end? Well... We have some girls that can put the ball in the net. I've, I've witnessed that for the past couple of weeks working with them. Uh, but I think going back to what you said, working as a unit, you know, I, it's getting into certain areas on the field, 
communication is key. I, I, that's one thing that we're, we're going to continue to work on is communicating and communicating with specifics too. Um, and I think if we do that and we get to the right areas, we have, we have the right people to put the ball in the net. Have you been able to reach out to Coach Karen, and, or has he reached out to you, and has he talked to you about uh, what some expectations for this program for you? Yeah, we haven't had a chance to connect yet, but I do have his contact information, and we're we're going to connect soon. Um, I, I do have some some holdovers from uh, from his staff, so it's been nice to kind of talk with them, and then I think it's also helped, you know, with the girls as well, you know, for them getting to know me, and and for me getting to know them. Obviously, uh, only a couple of days into, into practice, uh, but early on, what are your hopes and expectations for what this team can do this year? Yeah, I, you know, I haven't set any win-loss you know, goals or anything like that. I, I'm not necessarily as focused on, on our record this year. It's on what we're doing on the field, in practice, in the classroom, things like that. And I want our games to be competitive. I want teams to not want to play us, honestly. Um, and I, I, that's, that's where my goal is right now. Well, we thank you for, for coming in. We look forward to working with you throughout the year. Um, best of luck uh, in year one, and hopefully uh, we'll be around for a long time. Awesome. Thank you. All right, we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back with new head volleyball coach Talana Rudzidis right after this. Welcome back to this special summer sports night along with Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young, and now we're happy to have with us the new head volleyball coach, Talana Rudzidis. Talana, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. And let's just start by asking, you know, kind of what is your background and, and how did you come to, to be the new head coach? Uh, yeah, my background currently, I'm a little bit younger on the coaching side, but I've been coaching skills for, or private skills for about six years or so, working with some different clubs in the local area. Um, in club season, I was playing collegiately up until last season, and so um, after the season ended, I wasn't really looking to coach anywhere, and some people reached out to me who just kind of knew about some of my coaching skills, asked me to apply at Coon Rapids. I did. I absolutely loved the girls in the interview, and um, the AD at the time was Kurt. Um, amazing, and he really sold me on the school and just the wonderful things that it had to offer. And now our new uh, AD, Jeff, as we transfer over, I think he's um, really doing the same exact thing with um, great big plans for the future and has been really awesome to all of us coaches. So that's kind of how I got there. One of the fascinating things I learned about you is that you have a there's a coaching background in your family, your, yes. your parents and your sister. Talk a little bit about that and you know what you take from from learning from them and growing up and and, and playing volleyball into what you bring into this program. Yeah, so um, my mom and my dad actually we'll go way back. They met in college and it was because they were teaching each other volleyball. So my dad's name is Raleigh Rizitas. My mom is Leah Rizitas. They're the head coach at. Um, Legacy Christian Academy in Andover, and the JV slash assistant coach is my mom, Leah Rizitas. So um, one of the biggest things that I've learned from them over the years is that my dad, um, he is really great with the team dynamics, the uh, strategy. He can create um, you know, the best lineup, and he, he can just see things that no other coaches can see. Um, my mom is extremely um, wonderful at the technical and the fundamental skills, also just like the empathetic relationship building. And so combined, those two things is really how I've formed my style of coaching is there is that room for the empathy, the relationships, the struggle, the life, whatever that is, but there's also that room for the str str uh, the strategy, you know, the fundamentals and how all of those types of things work together. Um, and the other aspect is um, what you're mentioning, my sister, who will be our assistant coach. She has been at Augsburg uh, University here in the cities for the past seven years, and uh, she'll be working with us there. She was a blocking um, and middles or a blocking and hitting specialist there. And uh, she's going to transition that over to us, too. She also did a lot of the recruitment. And so she's already working with our girls and telling them, I can help you, you know, talk to coaches, what the recruitment process looks like. You know, we want to get you guys at college, whatever level it might be. So she's there for that. 
Initial impressions, obviously, it's uh, we talked a little bit before. You did get to, to work with the girls a bit over the summer. Now only really two days into um, your official practices and tryouts, and you've got a game just 10 days away. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on where you're at and, uh, and, and what you look forward to most? Um, I am so grateful that I got to start practicing with them early this summer because from, first of all, so many freshmen came. They already understand my philosophy, how I want to coach, how I want the team to be, how I want us to represent ourselves. Um, so I've really been able to instill that in them throughout the whole summer. Um, we had tryouts yesterday. We chose our varsity day one. We had a seven hour tryout. Um, we had breaks and stuff, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and today we had our first day with our varsity. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about that for a second. Um, varsity, we're looking um, a lot of talent. A lot of talent on the team, a lot of girls who are very dedicated, working hard off season, uh, both on their skills, their athleticism, um, just um, all of those type of things, watching film, whatever it may be. Um, we have some things that we definitely need to work on. A lot of it is just our consistency at this point. They can dig a really hard ball that I'll hit at them one minute and then um, struggle with an easier pass the next minute. So a lot of it is that confidence instilling in them, but also reps, uh, repetition, um, getting them as, as much time as they can on the court. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at right now. I mean, you look at the program over the last few years, and it's struggled, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your philosophy in terms of how do you turn this program program around, and you know, and until and obviously get the girls involved and have fun playing volleyball as well as as hopefully winning? Yeah, um, biggest thing that we are working on right now is just doesn't really even have to do with volleyball. Character development, what it means to be a leader, what it means to want something, work for it, what it means to treat others with kindness, and all of those types of things that I think. Um, make up a really solid person, integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, all of that relates to how hard they're working on the court and how much they want to learn. They are putting in all of that time with their skills and my goal, um, similar to what Ben said, isn't necessarily for the season of we're going to get this many wins, we're going to do this. Obviously we have some of those goals like here are you know some teams that we really want to push to to take that win. However, my greatest goal this year is to have a successful season in character development. Who they are as a young lady, who they're going to be in college, and you know, further on in whatever life brings because volleyball is not you know, gonna last sure. forever. Who, who they are and, and how they treat other people, that's gonna make that lasting. Um, you know, lasting for everybody. Well, and that's, that's we've, we've talked about it numerous times that you know, sports, or, or really any extracurriculars uh, are great for what they are, but it also helps develop you in so many other ways. Um, you know, learning to um, work as a team, be a leader, as you talked about. And these are, these are things that then you take on into your life, whether you're working in athletics or, or not, which most, most people won't be. Um, so that's, that's pretty pretty important part of what you're trying to teach. Mm -hmm. um, he he mentioned it. They've they've struggled, mm -hmm. uh, but you know we saw last year uh, a lot of close sets, mm -hmm. but not being able to finish. What does it take to get the team to get over that edge and instead of losing that 25-21 match, but mm -hmm. able to win that 25-21 set? Yep couple of things we're doing in practice and I would say practicing it is the most important thing you're practicing the mindset number one is you're being intentional with every single point we'll play games where I'll say you have to get 10 out of 15 of these for everyone that they miss you know there might be um, a volleyball related exercise that they would do um, so we, we focus a lot on that the other one is keeping track of points and, and keeping consistent in the points. So say they're playing the JV team. JV team is up 23, they're at 17. How do you work through those points to win? Maybe even if it's 26, 24, or 25, 23, how do you keep them there? And how do you finish a game? Today I talked with them specifically about volleyball is a game of failure. So 
the graph would look like this. You don't want it to look like this because that's when it shows inconsistent point gaps. So I said for us this year on the court, if you see me on the sidelines looking at you like this, that means, yeah, you made a mistake or two, but now you're going to make two points. Now you're going to lose a point. Now you're going to go up. And so it's just that consistency of riding that wave rather than going up and down and, and learning that and having them you know, be able to finish those games in that way. I love that answer. Yeah, great love answer. that answer. Uh, we're getting short on time. Last question here. Your hopes for season one. My hopes for season one, just as a recap, I want the girls to have a lot of fun. I want them to improve. We have really knowledgeable coaches, but we also have coaches who understand relationships, who understand life. And above all, I just, I want those girls to walk away from the season being stronger people, having more integrity, feeling proud of what they do, and, and just moving forward in life and, um, and, and looking back at this and, and thinking, wow, what a wonderful time. It's not even about, oh, I lost, I won, whatever, just what a wonderful time that was. Well, I certainly look forward to working with you throughout the year. Thank you so much for uh, being with us and definitely best luck uh, this season. We are going to get to see your girls in action right away. Uh, our first broadcast of the fall schedule is the opener when the Cardinal Volleyballers host St. Francis. We'll have a boys and girls soccer doubleheader against Maple Grove on August 28th. And the football team kicks off the season at Centennial. Uh, our friends from North Metro Television will have coverage of that one. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. We want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. We want to thank all of the coaches for giving us a little bit of their time. And uh, for all of us, including Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young saying goodnight. <laughs>